Don Don Global presents the DG Recruit Podcast on everything headhunting and recruitment. Achieve the life and career you envision. What's up, Game Changers? It's your host, Don Don, founder of Don Don Global, the headhunting and career coaching company helping you achieve the life and career you envision. In today's DG Recruit Podcast, I'll cover how to break into C-level recruitment. One of my colleagues recently sent me a note from my old company that worked with me. Uh, He sent me a a question that reads, I'm starting to recruit for C-level roles within tech. Have you any advice to how to get these jobs on? Also, I don't see any of these jobs advertised. And by the time I do get to them, they are, are already filled. So what do you do in that circumstance when you're trying to build out a market in the C-level recruitment space within any given industry? Well, I always tell people, I like that question and where it's at because you're coming from a business development perspective, but really I think the answer lies in your candidate generation pool. And I'll tell you why. If you are a startup, you will be most likely competing with established players within your space, right? Anywhere you go, there's already other recruiters covering that space. That's a given. When you're trying to go in from a business development perspective, right, that could be interesting, right? Because you're new, you're someone different. But if you go to those meetings and you come out of there and then you go home and you don't have amazing candidates to follow up from that meeting, What is the point of even going to that meeting? So business development for me is a second step always subject to my actual candidate development. When I broke into the exec search space and when I break into any recruitment space, my first goal is to drum up a whole roster of amazing candidates wherever I go because that is our job as recruiters. If you don't have outstanding staff, especially when it comes to C-level people, then why would a C-level need need you, right? If you don't have those people ready to go, you show up to a meeting on a BD perspective where the people are like, okay, show us what you got and you ain't got nothing to show, why would you even go to that meeting? right? You don't even know your space that well. You don't really even have active live profiles that are ready to interview. You really just fail on your first uh, couple minutes through the door. So I personally don't have the guts to walk into a client meeting with nothing, like really nothing, other than if I truly have every single candidate out and uh, out and about, and I am lacking some now, and I'm building up another pipeline, which is what happened to me the other day. I went to a meeting, and I literally had no candidates left because they're all in offer process. Um, That's the unique market in which I work. But in your exec search market, that should not be the case because you should have a whole volume of people who are already employed, And they are passive. They're very, very passive. That is the goal, is that you need to have exclusive handle on a few, if not a whole bucket of individuals in your space who live within the desired geographical range of the majority of your clients. And these people are not looking. They're not talking to other recruiters. You happen to be the only one that they want to speak with and get to know. Uh, they found you through some means and uh, they love what you're, uh, you're all about. So they're happy to rest their networking skills on you. So the pitch to the candidate always is, I'm your spokesperson. I'm going to create an executive summary for you. Now, the executive summary serves a few purposes. Uh, the first one is that it tells the story about your candidate in a way that a client can understand very quickly. And this executive summary is blinded, obviously, so that your client does not directly poach and save themselves that, you know, 70 grand to 100 grand fee. I'm talking U.S. terms. Maybe in your local market, it's slightly lower, uh, but you get my point. The point is a client, if they have the name, they can go and source that person on their own. They can also say they already own that candidate. So obviously, for your exact summary, you are not going to disclose any identifiable information. That almost also includes titles as well as companies worked at. You can only paint very general yet somewhat specific content content on that exec summary. So that's the art in and of itself. If you have weak writing skills, this is exactly why the large exec search firms hire a bunch of people from English degrees and marketing backgrounds to do their research and marketing. So again, if you have the resources, you can hire out this piece of the business, but most likely you are doing it yourself. And that is the whole point. When you're in the startup mode, you got to do most of the things yourself. 
Another podcast I'll make for another day is Social Media Marketing 101 for recruitment businesses. This is a space that I definitely do uh, very well myself in, and I feel that my network and other recruiters severely lack in social media expertise because they really just see the job uh, as a short-term thing. They're not utilizing the social media aspect of what we can do for our market and all the tools we can use. So social media is something else you'll have to crack another day that's another topic. Uh, That's something I wanted to highlight to you to refer back and to check in on future episodes because I will be speaking more about social media shortly. Obviously, that's going to be a big piece of your exec search market strategy as well. Back to the topic at hand. So the first step is to create these amazing exec summaries that cover your amazing candidate. Now, if you're endeavoring to do exec search, I'm assuming that you already have recruitment experience. That's very gutsy for people without any recruitment experience to go directly into exec search. I also do not recommend that either because that's nuts. Like you don't have any of the experience to run it, yet you want to do it. I don't think that's the smartest thing to do because you will make mistakes. It's better to make them earlier in your career on a probably lower level market so that you minimize your issues as you get into bigger dollar amounts. Now that's just a life philosophy. You can absolutely jump all those steps if you're ready for it. In any case, I assume that you know Recruitment 101 and you're good with candidate generation. So I'm not going to cover that. You can go to other topics in my podcast to get more experience on candidate generation. Now, I'm assuming you're already working with these amazing candidates that you've identified that look like A-level candidates, as in they work at their existing companies for a good amount of tenure. They come from fantastic uh, company backgrounds. So this means on the front end of exec recruitment, you do need to spend a lot of money and time wooing candidates and figuring out who's who, who actually can do what they say they can do, and who's just BSing me. I saw that a lot in exec search. A lot of people, even if they have high titles and big pedigrees, they're really, really not that great at their job, and they're not ideal candidates. Some because they've been in the industry too long and they're irrelevant. Some because they've managed to basically lie and cheat their way through jobs. And you see that in every single market. So when you start any new market, again, be prepared to see that, especially if you're going through job boards or you're working off ads um, that you post and people are responding to you. Trust me, those are always going to be B-level candidates, if not C-level candidates. I've seen a lot of those people. They have really good jobs. They have really good pedigrees, yet they're absolute garbage, right? You'll see that in every single market. So my advice to you is to be selective from the get-go of who are you going to represent? Because if you represent someone like that, who's responding to all these different job boards and who really isn't who they say they are, you're in trouble, buddy. Because that person is going to either get out of process when they work with you because they have other stuff going on and they're liars and cheats and they don't listen to you and they won't do as you say. Um, Those people tend to be the worst candidates to work with. Be very careful if those are the people you're building the foundation of your business on. Instead, I recommend, obviously, headhunting for the talent that you want, proactively reaching out to the candidates that you know are going to be of interest to your clients. So I'm assuming you have this whole bank of people and you've now done the exact summary process for them. Then you do basic work in terms of BD off of that new profile. And now you actually have something to talk about and to share with your clients. So that's the whole point is that you must make sure that you actually have something of value so the clients can distinguish you from the other recruiters who are all saying the same thing, right? Every recruiter is like, I am so-and-so, I do this and this. And the reality is, do you have candidates? No, so go away right? So you got to have the product. If you don't have product, don't show up. Don't come. Don't meet. Like if you don't have what it takes to generate product and to show me that you can actually give me what I want uh, as a client, do not come to this BD meeting because you're just going to embarrass yourself ultimately. So again, the, the strategy, first step is generate candidates. Second step, is create exact summaries. Third step is get out to market. Get out to market the same way you do any technical market, where you do send outs, where you do write ups, where you do introductions, where you send in mails, where you send you know messages, where you send emails. And again, this 
the, the strategy there is consistency of voice and of brand so that they know, okay, I work with a certain level of staff and you're seeing it on a regular basis. So you know that this is my space, that I do cover this space. And basically then you get your first batch of interviews and the, the market strategy doesn't change. When you do client development, you need a certain level of volume right? You need a lot of clients to go after. If you just add 10 businesses, you're not going to find the jobs. Um, if you expect to see jobs listed on their website, obviously that's not going to happen. If you want to go through the effort of doing deep, deep research into every single company and seeing every company's page and see, oh, who's missing a C-level XYZ? Let's say, okay, I'm looking for CTOs, um, you know, chief technology officers for tech companies, and I'm looking and I'm looking, oh, this one doesn't have one. I'm going to add them to my list. Do you know how much time that wastes? And ultimately, does that actually make a difference? No, I'd rather just add, add, add thousands of people to my list and then send them a blast of my executive summaries on a regular basis. I control my time. I don't have time to research. And I know that people love research. Oh boy, do they love research. All the exec search firms that you look at right now, they have a bunch of people sitting around doing research. Oh, compensation reports. Oh, oh, market trend reports. Oh, industry analysis. That's BS. Show me the candidates. I don't care what you do. I don't care how much research you do. Give me the candidates. Give me the goods. You know, if I'm a client, I don't care about compensation. I know more or less what people are making as compensation. Clients know better than anyone else those, uh, you know, market conditions, or they at least know some of it because they're in the market themselves and they hire for people all the time or they know of people who are making moves. So they generally have a grasp on that information. The real value add is solving their talent gap, bringing forth the best connections to their network that they would not have had access to without you. Basic definition of headhunter. Don't go off into the rails of becoming a researcher or market analysis, providing useful feedback. None of that matters. Give me 25 amazing exec summaries and you have my attention. All right. So that's what works in exec search is product. Just like every single recruitment firm, it's product. Everything else is supplemental to product. You want to lead a panel? You want to do all these fancy dinners? Go for it. But if you don't have product for me at the end of the day, you're still just another recruiter. So that is what differentiates top performance from low performance. It's do you have the needs? Do you have my product? If you do, then I will talk to you. If you don't, then get back in line with all the rest of the B players who say they might have the people, but ultimately cannot deliver. So again, you are defined by the quality of your product. Therefore, spend the maximum time working with the best candidates in your network and working with them to create their marketing profile, again, with the expectation of exclusivity of representation. I hope DG Recruit is helping you understand the realities, challenges, and opportunities when it comes to headhunting and recruitment. Whether you're already a top biller or an aspiring headhunter, I'd love to get to know you. Sign up at DonnaGlobal.com to stay in touch on all aspects of career coaching and headhunting. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll see you there. Thanks for tuning in to DG Recruit. This has been a production of Donna Global.